up guys, and this is my crutch. <laughs> Hello guys, it's Joel here, aka Galax, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. And today's video is how to win at life on a budget. Now this video is inspired by female YouTuber Anne Michelle. She did a video called How to Slay at Life on a Budget, which I thought was amazing. It's full of chandeliers and sequins, which is not really my vibe, so I thought I'd do my own first. Lads out there, I say the term lads loosely because I'm not much of a lad, but let's get on with the video anyway. If you do like this video, please don't forget to subscribe, give it a thumbs up, and let me know what you thought in the comments below. Now let's get on with the video. Once upon a time, I was a student, and I didn't have any money at all. But I still looked great. No, I don't know. I can't really say whether I look great or not. I thought I looked good at the time, and I didn't have a lot of money at all. So for this video, I've come up with 10 tips on how to win at life on a budget. So I hope you enjoy, and make sure you're taking notes. So my first tip on how to win at life on a budget, and it's something that I've been doing for years, even before I started blogging or YouTubing or anything like that, and it is sell your old stuff. There are loads of things that are in my wardrobe that are probably in your wardrobe as well that you don't wear anymore, you haven't worn anymore, and you think, oh, I might wear this one day you're not going to wear it. So sell it to someone that wants it. There are so many benefits to selling your clothes because it makes space in your wardrobe, you get more money to buy new things, and you just feel better about it in general. Some sites that I use to sell my old clothes are Depop, Grailed, Uniform, or eBay. There's loads and loads of places that you can sell stuff online. Depop for me is for more affordable things, and then I use Uniform to sell more expensive things. The next one is shop online. Now, I tend to only shop online. The only reason I would go into stores is if I want to see something in real life before I make the purchase online. I'll go literally in Zara in Oxford Street and be like, hmm, and then go home and be like, I'll buy that because I saw it in store. Shopping online is so much more convenient. It eliminates that sense of guilt of handing your card over because you just type it all in. It's kind of like a game. And then it arrives at your house a few days later, like a lovely, lovely Christmas present. Christmas every day. And you can usually find things cheaper online which brings me to my next point, which is discount codes. Before you buy anything or purchase anything, have a search on Google of the product name and just see where else they're selling it, what other prices they have it for. Literally, my mum is a prime example of this. My mum ordered a scarf the other day from ASOS, it was £85. She went and looked elsewhere, Googled the name, she found it on John Lewis for half price and it wasn't even on sale. What's that about? So definitely make sure you search everything online before you buy it because you'll probably find it cheaper and you'll definitely find discount codes. Um, if you search the name of the store as well, you'll just find discount codes. Everything tends to be cheaper online. Usually lots of places have free shipping as well, so you don't even have to pay for shipping. So online is just better. My next tip is newsletters. So along with the whole online thing, you can usually sign up to a brand's newsletter, you'll get like 10% off on your first order. If you refer a friend, you'll get a discount as well. Newsletters are the way forward if you do want that special kind of discount for doing absolutely nothing at all. So basically I'm helping you be lazy and save money. So my next tip for saving money is DIY. Do it yourself, because if you want something that's super expensive that you've seen from a really cool designer, or something even on the high street that's super, super expensive for you, or out of your price range, try and make it yourself. Here's a really quick example. So this Daniel Patrick hoodie I have is acid wash. It was $220, but if you want to make your own, you just go and buy a black hoodie and bleach the f out of it. YouTube has millions, literally millions of DIY videos. If you want to know how to make something, search it on YouTube and find out how to make it. My next tip is watch YouTubers. If you watch YouTubers or read blogs or follow bloggers over on Instagram and stuff like that, a lot of us tend to work with brands and then offer discounts to these brands or give you information on when things are coming out or special deals and stuff like that. So it's really important to support the people that you like and at the end of the day, they're just there to help you and that's it really. Kind of like having a personal shopper or a personal stylist just in your phone that also offers you discounts and talks to you and gives you life advice. So... For example, I do affordable alternatives videos constantly. I need to do a new one though, so give me ideas for new designs that you want to see. Because it's on Gucci, Vetmon, Saint Laurent, Off-White, Fear of God, so if you want to see more, leave a comment below of what design you want me to do next. But affordable alternatives videos, I'll leave a link to those in the description below as well. My next tip, if you fancy it, why don't you start a blog yourself? I can't stress enough the help in life that my blog Instagram, YouTube channel have given me, so if you're passionate about what you wear, or your style, or whatever, then try and make something of it, put it online, work really hard, dedicate yourself to it. For me, it was just a hobby for so long, now it's been my full-time job for a year and four months, and it was the best decision of my life. So if you do want to do something like me, then I definitely stress you to start. No better time than the present, so just give it a go. What's the worst that could happen? I think one of my genuine fears of putting myself out there on the internet is becoming a meme. That's one thing that you really don't want. You don't want to be a meme, unless it's a really cool meme. Because if you haven't noticed, brands and companies love to send things to bloggers. I get a whole load of crap every single month. I get loads of good stuff, but I also get loads of not so good stuff. Stuff that I don't show to you guys, because I only show you stuff that I really, really like. Um, but yeah, if you become a blogger, or an Instagrammer, or a YouTuber, companies will probably start sending you stuff as well, so there's a heads up. I was so broke at university, I had no money. I was working part-time, studying full-time, and my blog was what kept me kind of clothed. So I think it's a really good idea, especially if you're struggling for money, and you've got this kind of creative outlet, and you want to take pictures, you want to make videos, stuff like that, then definitely just start something. My next tip, I completely do not 
can't agree with, but so many young people out there make money this way and it's become a reseller. If you're nifty and you're good at copying things like on release, rare items, limited editions, then become a reseller. You can literally buy things and sell them for more than double the price and you can literally be 16 and balling. I know there's a lot of Instagrammers out there that literally just buy something, take a picture in it and then resell it on um, and then they can buy the next thing and just keep growing that way and monopolizing on trends. It's a very savvy business idea. I think if you have the time to get that kind of rare stuff and still sell it on and make a profit, then why not? But then you leave people like me taking a massive L on every single Yeezy release since the first one. The next tip, prioritize what's important. If you feel like a new jumper is the most important thing to you ever, then put money aside, start saving for it, you know? Prioritize what is important. Make sure health, food, and living space are all paid for before you start splurging on expensive shoes or designer trainers or things like that. Do you think in your head, like, is this really important? Do I really need that? I, for one, do not want to rely on anybody else for money whatsoever. I'm budgeting now more than ever because I don't get paid every month. Some people get paid monthly. I get paid like every now and again. So there are some months where I might, might not make any money. There are some months where I might make a lot of money. So I'm trying to save up to move into my own place and then I'm faced with, you know, an 800 pound fear of God hoodie. And it's like, well, I could just buy that hoodie, but that's going into my savings. I've been working so, so hard for for years or I could not get it and, you know, get a different hoodie from ASOS or something. So sometimes life comes at us with these decisions and it's so, so difficult. Yeah, I didn't get the hoodie. <laughs> you don't want to be that one guy that's always relying on their parents or friends being like, can I buy some money? Can I have some food? You don't want to be that person. The next tip is that you don't have to shop expensive clothes or buy expensive clothes to look good, not at all. Literally hundreds and hundreds of websites that are really affordable and sell really amazing clothing. I shop on loads all the time. I'll leave links in the description below to some of my favorite affordable shopping websites like ASOS, Topman, River Island, H&M, Forever 21, and maybe some more that you might not have heard of, especially ones in Korea that I'm obsessed with. Um, it's just a case of scouring the internet for things that you really, really like. The next tip is if you're young enough and hot enough, start Start stripping. No, I meant student discounts. If you are still a student, then monopolize on the fact that you can get a student discount everywhere. You can get a free cheeseburger at McDonald's. You can get 10% off at Topman. You get 20% off at ASOS sometimes. Rinse that student card for all it's worth because one day they'll take it away and you really, really miss it. And my second to last tip is get more money. If you're working full time and you need more money, sell stuff online, start reselling something, start a small project where you can get more money. Because one of the one things about budget, do you know what's easier? If you have more money. If you aren't working, then get a full time job. Also, I was trying really, really hard with my blog and Instagram and YouTube to get it off the ground into that kind of paid space where I could have it as a full time job. I literally worked my ass off at loads of other companies doing full time, like nine to five, um, and then did everything else when I came home from work. So I was essentially doing two jobs. And I feel like if you want to make money and you want to make something, you have to work really, really hard and you have to dedicate time and effort to it. Otherwise, it's just not going to happen. And my final tip for this day, this evening, whenever you're watching this, is don't give up. So many people laughed at me when I was taking pictures of myself outside for years and years and years. Even my mum at the very, very start was like, why are you taking pictures of yourself? People walk past me on the street like, ha, ah, taking pictures of himself, what a loser. Friends cringing at my YouTube channel. Hello friends. I really couldn't give two hoots because this is what I love doing. Get your umbrellas out guys, this is gonna get soppy. This is what I love doing, I love talking to you guys. Never stop believing in yourself and what you can achieve because you can literally do anything. But yeah, I hope this has given you some motivation, some ideas for budgeting, things that you can do to save money. If you like this video, please don't forget to subscribe. It means so, so much to me, and I will see you on Thursday. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.